Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby with another powerful point to ponder. And today I'm back here at the studios of uh, SSC Live TV, and uh, I'll be uh, broadcasting the powerful points to ponder the entire week here at the studios here at St. Stephen Church of, um, of uh, our uh, digital TV uh, platform. I want to thank you so very much uh, for how you followed me and the comments I received from you uh, in 2020. And I'm confident that 2021 will even be better than 2020. Um, Dr. Ken Jopes said that 2020 has a zero in it. And for many, 2020 was a zero. But uh, 2021 has a, a, a positive digit. And so let's make 2021 positive. Today, I want to begin um, the year talking about something critically important um, to be successful in 2021. And it's, it's, an, it's a spirit that I hope will grab you. And it is the can-do spirit. There's a person we're going to look at all week. His name is Caleb. He's perhaps is not as famous and prominent as some of the other Bible characters like David and Moses and Abraham. But uh, Caleb is an interesting person. Uh, and what made him interesting was the spirit he had. And he had a can-do spirit. And I pray that this can-do spirit that Caleb had will be the spirit that you have in 2021. The first time we're introduced to this guy, Caleb, is in Numbers chapter 14. And this is a year and a half, about 18 months, after the children of Israel have left Egypt. They were in bondage for 400 years in Egypt. And Moses, oh, the great Moses, was used by God to deliver the people out of oppression. And um, so 18 months later, they have actually arrived to the outskirts of the promised land the place where God was going to bless them. And they're so close they can see it. And um, Moses decided to send 12 spies to do a reconnaissance of the land to determine its strengths, its weaknesses, its vulnerabilities, and what was the best place to cross over into the promised land and uh, what would be a good strategy to subdue the promised land and to carve out living space for the children of Israel. Well, when the 12 spies are, came back from their reconnaissance mission, they came back and they bragged about the, the fruitfulness of the land. In fact, to demonstrate how fruitful the land was, they brought clusters of grapes that were so huge that they had to carry them uh, on poles between uh, two men, but there was only one problem. They saw, they saw some giants over there in the promised land. And because they saw giants, they felt intimidated because the, the giants were bigger than them. And so 10 of the spies said, we cannot do it. So they have a can't do spirit and we can't do it because we're small, they're huge, and they will overwhelm us. Now, this, of course, is in total rebellion of, of God's plan because God is, has ordained that they would conquer the promised land. Well, um, they put it up for a vote, and the majority won, uh, and the majority said, we're not crossing over. And God became so angry with them that God decided that, that uh, the entire nation would not enter in the promised land, but they would wander in the wilderness for 40 years, a year for each day the 12 spies were in the promised land spying it out and said, I'm going to wipe out this generation of unbelievers and I'm going to start a new generation, raise a new generation um, of people, kids, young people who are under the age of 20. 
And this is what God says in Numbers chapter 14, verses 20 through 24. We read Numbers 14, verses 20 through 24. The Lord answered, I will forgive them as you have asked. God was going to wipe them out, but Moses prayed and God said, okay, I'm not going to wipe them out because Moses interceded for them. But I promise you that as surely as I live and as surely as my presence fills the earth, none of these people will live to enter that land. They have seen the dazzling light of my presence and the miracles that I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, but they have tried my patience over and over again and refused to obey me. They will never enter the land which I promised to their ancestors. None of those who have rejected me. So whenever you don't do God's will, you're rejecting God. Uh, who have rejected me will ever enter it. But because my servant Caleb has a different attitude and has remained loyal to me, I will bring him into the land which he explored and his descendants will possess the land. Now, the reason why Caleb is going to enter in the land is because Caleb had a different attitude. Caleb said in, in defiance of what the 10 spies said to the people, to the nation of Israel, Caleb said, we can do it. We can do it. He has a can do spirit or a can do attitude. And the word that is used here, God says he has a different attitude. Attitude determines altitude. Attitude determines how high you will go. Your attitude is simply your response, your emotional response to how you face and how you respond to how you face giants or troubles or challenges. God is concerned about our attitudes. Attitudes is more important than abilities. Ability asks the question, can I? Attitude asks the question, will I? And God just wants to know, will you enter into the places that I have ordained for you in spite of the fact that those places have giants or they have challenges and they should have challenges because in life, there's no blessings without battles. There's no gains without giants. You show me someone who's made a gain. I'll show you someone who's had to face a, a giant. You show me someone who's has a, a blessing. I'll show you someone who had a battle to face in order to get that blessing. And God wants to know, do you have the can do attitude or do you have the I can't do it attitude? Basically, there's just two kinds of attitudes. The can do attitude is a positive attitude. The can't do attitude is a negative attitude. And the can do positive attitude that Caleb had is not an attitude that is blind to the negative. I mean, Caleb realized, yeah, there are giants over there. I'm not blind to it, but I refuse to dwell on the giants. I'm not dwelling on the giants because I'm dwelling on these big grapes. And if I have to overcome some giants in order to get to the grapes, then I'm willing to face the giants to get to the grapes. Many people focus on the giants. Caleb chose to focus on the grapes. Now I want you to check this out. They are right on the outskirts of the promised land. They are 18 months removed from Canaan. And all they had to do was to go in and seize it. God had already demonstrated that God was greater than anything they faced. God said, I got you out of Egypt. I sustained you in the bleak, barren wilderness for 18 months. And if I did that for you, then these giants will not be a problem for you. But, but it all depends on what you're looking at. As I said, the, the, the 10 spies were looking at the giants. Caleb was looking at God. The 10 spies were saying, well, the giants are bigger than us. And that's true. The giants in the land was bigger than, than those spies. But Caleb was saying, yes, look how big the giants are in comparison to us. But look how small those giants are in comparison to God. And while your problems and challenges and giants may be bigger than you, they are midgets in comparison to God. 
And you know what happened? As soon as those 10 spies started talking about the giants, then fear and doubt spread all over the camp because fear and doubt in one person is like COVID-19. Fear and doubt is a communicable disease that spreads. And um, the virus of fear and faithlessness spread from those 10 spies to the, to the entire nation and they aborted God's purpose and plans for their life simply because they had a I can't do spirit. Caleb is going to enter into the land of promise because he had a can do spirit. Don't forget, God's not concerned about your ability. God's concerned about your attitude. Ability asks the question, can I? Attitude asks the question, will I? And if God is with us, then your response should always be, yes, Lord, I'm willing to go all the way with you. That's the can-do spirit. I remember, in one of my favorite poems, and I heard it many years ago, was a poem by uh, the poet Edgar Guest. And Edgar Guest had a poem entitled, It Couldn't Be Done. And this is what Edgar Guest said, and I'll close with this. Somebody said it couldn't be done, but he with the chuckle replied, that maybe it couldn't, but he would be the one who wouldn't say till he tried. So he buckled right in and with the trace of a grin on his face, if he worried, he hit it. He started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done and he did it. Somebody scoffed, oh, you'll never do that. At least no one ever has done it. But he took off his coat and he took off his hat. And the first thing we know, he begun it with the lift of his chin and a bit of a grin without any doubt or quit it, he started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done and he did it. There are thousands to tell you it cannot be done. There are thousands to prophesy failure. There are thousands to point out to you one by one the dangers that wait to assail you. But just buckle in with a bit of a grin. Just take off your coat and go to it. Just start in to sing as you tackle the thing that could not be done and you'll do it. Thank God for Caleb. May his tribe increase in 2021. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you that ability is not what you're concerned about, but attitude. Not can I, but will I? Because if we have you, we have all we need to slay any giants that stand in the way of our grapes. Right now, give us the can-do attitude because we can do the things that you have ordained and willed for our life. Bless, I pray, your people as we begin the first full week in this new year, a week with great possibilities. Help us to seize it and tackle the thing that they said could not be done and do it to your glory and our good through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to thank you so very much uh, for being with me on this, the first Monday of uh, the uh, powerful, point, powerful Points to Ponder series. And I hope you will really ponder these points. If you do not have a church home, Everyone needs a church home. Make that a priority in 2021. I'd like to invite you to become a part of the St. Stephen Church family. And uh, you can email us here and we'll get back in touch with you at newstart at ssclive.org. God's blessings be upon you. Get that can-do spirit. God bless you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And as we close, don't forget the final salutation during COVID-19. Remember to stay safe, stay sane, and if possible, stay home. I'll see you tomorrow.